So thank you for joining me, Claire, as we make this little demo video for Make Seconds Count, Karen Henderson Legacy Fund of Birdsong Yoga. So what's an online yoga class with Make Seconds Count all about? Well, Claire is going to be my wonderful attendee to class today. So thank you, Claire, and lovely to have you along. And what we're just going to do is a shortened version of the type of things that we would do in a online yoga class. So everybody that comes to these classes is part of the Make Seconds Count community. So, and I'm a physio by background with a lot of oncology and palliative care experience, also a yoga teacher. So everything that we do is very appropriate for people who are living with secondary breast cancer. Um, some things that I will keep talking about when we move through the class, but just to be aware of, is that if you have a surgery site which is sore or tender at all, or you've got a lymphedema arm, you may find that when we're bringing the arm up, that you don't want to lift it too high, and that's absolutely fine. And um, I'll give you some options as we go through for that. And um, sometimes when we're doing twists, if you know that your spine is an area where you've got a problem, then again, you take the first or the second option that I give you when we're doing the twists. The same with coming forwards, whether we're standing or in sitting, you might not want to bend too far forwards in your spine. So you'll take the first or second option for that as well. And I think the key message is really to listen to your body. You know it much, much better than me. For anybody who's new to class, we will have a 15, 20 minute catch up either on the phone or on Zoom. So you can tell me a bit about your individual circumstances, but I'm not there with you. So you do what feels comfortable. You don't do things that feel sore. Sometimes a little bit of a stretching feeling or an opening feeling is absolutely fine, but you don't want it to be more than that. And um, so just be really aware of that. And we use a lot of the principles of yoga breathing, which we go through in class, and relaxation as well. So most classes start in sitting and then move through some standing, some balance, some lying, and some relaxation. And I'm trying to pull in the tenets of things that I know affect people with secondary breast cancer. So a lot of you will talk about having joints, aches, and pains. Um, or maybe in either surgical menopause or medically induced menopause. So there's maybe pelvic floor things going on. Fatigue can be an issue for some people. So often they find that they sleep better after they've done the relaxation. Um, it might be that you're feeling that managing your breath is hard, that actually getting that awareness of your breath moving well when you're moving is difficult. Um, we know that as we get older, bone density drops and a lot of the medications that some of you might be taking also affect bone density. So we're keen, I'm always keen to get weight going through the arms and wrists for um, people if that's appropriate for them. So sort of pulling in all these different bits of, I suppose, what you would call evidence-based practice for exercise in secondary breast cancer um, and trying to bring that into a yoga class. Um, but what tends to happen is once we get started, I'm not talking about cancer really at all. It's very much just a class for you um, at that time. So just now there's two classes a week, Wednesday night from eight till nine and uh, Friday morning from 10 till 11. And we would send you out the Zoom link before that, have your initial consultation with me on the phone and then we would join the group after that. So as you can see, Claire and I are just set up in our home space. We've not really got anything particularly special close by. We're both sitting on a sturdy enough chair. Um, and then some of the things that might be useful to bring with you are some things that can just help you. So I have got a yoga strap here, which can be a dressing gown cord or a dog lead or a lead rope on a horse or a scarf or something like that. And that can just be helpful sometimes, when, particularly when you're moving your leg. So Claire's got a scarf there, which is her thing for moving her leg. Cute. And I have a couple of different heights of yoga blocks, which again are really cheap to get, but can be subbed with something like a recipe book. So, or a sturdy biography, some sort of hardback book is usually about that size. And sometimes we're just looking to lift the ground or lift the chair up a little bit so we don't have to stretch too far. And that sort of thing can be useful. Something thinner, so a thinner book or a um, 
folder or something like that can sometimes be helpful underneath your head. Or you might want to just have a little cushion, which can be really useful to put underneath your head as well when we're lying down. I don't do too much things on your knees because a lot of you tell me that your kneeling is a really difficult position for you. So you won't really need a knee pad because you don't tend to use them. Um, other things that might be nice is to have some cushions nearby. Or again, I've got a yoga bolster here. So sometimes when we're doing particularly the lying things, it can be handy if you feel one part of your body is not getting quite enough to the ground then to pop something underneath to give your hips some support or your knee or your arm or whatever it is can be good there as well. And the all important um, pet, pets come along and join us. Most weeks there's a puppy or a cat popping in. Um, so yeah, it's welcome. And a blanket for relaxation um, is often something that everybody brings with them. So it's something to tuck up and an eye mask if you would like to. And um, the Wednesday night crew often come in their pajamas, so you can be ready to jump straight into bed afterwards. So that's a little bit about me and a little bit about classes. Claire, you have done quite a lot of my classes in the past. Is there anything that you would like to add in about the setup or anything like that before we go on? I think I'd just like to say, don't think that you can take part in the class just because you're at home. I've got a very busy living room. It's really the only space I've got. But it works for me. I've managed to just, you know, as long as I've got my mat, I've got my cushion, I've got my scarf, and that's all I've really needed. Um, and I just don't let it hold you back if you think you can't, you can't do the class at home because you can, and I get a lot of benefit from it. Um, and I think it's useful also to be able to do it from home. Um, I think it makes it easier as a cancer patient not having to get yourself to places if you can do it at home, you're comfortable um and yeah just give it a go <laughs> yeah no I think that's actually actually a really important thing that you've touched on there about being able to do it from home is that for people who find getting down onto the floor a real effort you're in your house you've got your bed right there and anything that I do down on the floor on a mat you can easily do on a bed with the covers pulled back so it's just a little bit firmer so the whole of the lying sequence means that it's completely accessible to you. Whereas if you're going to a studio and everybody else is going down to the floor to do something and that feels difficult for you, then you're a bit stuck on terms of what do you do then? Whereas just move your laptop or your phone through to your bedroom and you can do the second part in bed. So that's a really good point about the advantage of it being at home as well. Yeah, and my pets don't get in the way either. I just let them take part if they want. <laughs> What can be nicer than relaxation with a cat lying on your tummy? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, so will we give it a quote and just do a yeah. few different moves between us? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so if you start off, just find yourself sitting in a comfortable seat. So you're welcome to sit down on the floor if you like, or you can sit on your chair. Mm -hmm. And then we often talk about just trying to find this length up through the spine. So you're thinking about your chin just being slightly tucked in, crown of your head just lifting slightly, and then just thinking of shoulders dropping away. We spend an awful lot of time here in our lives. So can you sit with your shoulders away? You're very welcome to have your back supported on the surface that you're resting on, or you can try sitting up as without your back supported. And at this point, you just want to begin to notice how you're feeling. So you're welcome to close your eyes or keep them open as you wish, but you don't need to look at the screen for this bit. And you're maybe just becoming aware of how your breath is moving in your body. So what I mean by that is can you notice the breath in through your nose or your mouth? And then can you notice what moves as you breathe in? What body parts are moving? So maybe you feel a slight lift at the top of your chest. Maybe you feel a slight movement outwards at your ribs. Maybe you feel your tummy moving as you breathe in, your tummy's coming out and forwards. And then the same thing, noticing your breath as you breathe out. 
So again, what's moving in your body? It might be that you feel your tummy relaxing, your tummy button moving back towards your spine when you breathe out. Maybe you feel a dropping of your ribs. Again, maybe a movement in your chest. And it might be that you're feeling the air in your nostrils or you're feeling the breath as it's coming out through your lips. You'll we'll take three breaths just in your own time with that awareness of how your breath is moving. And there's no judgment attached to that. There's no right or wrong, just being aware. And when you come to the end of your third breath there, if your eyes were closed, you could just let them gently open. And we'll just start with a few gentle back movements today. So we'll take a breath in and you're just taking your eyes up, your chin's coming out slightly, not all the way to your ceiling, but maybe just to where the ceiling joins the wall, that corner. And then tuck your chin in and you're just going to look down towards the floor. If any of this is making you feel dizzy, then just make the movement really small. It doesn't need to be big. It shouldn't be looking down again. It shouldn't be bringing pins and needles down your arms. But again, if it is, just make the movements even smaller. So one more inhale as your chin is coming up. Exhale, chin tucks in and then you're looking down to the floor. I'm just going to turn sideways so you can see my back here. So this time we're going to bring chest movement in as well. So we're just inhaling, chest lifting slightly, exhaling, shoulders round as your chin comes down onto your chest. Inhale, shoulders lift, chin lifts, eyes come up. Breathing out as your shoulders come forwards, your back moves backwards. And then we're going to bring the movement in with the base of the spine here as well. So on this inhale, you're rolling up from your tailbone. Your chest's coming forwards and your chin's coming up. And then we'll start the movement from the chin. Chin comes down to the chest. Chest moves back. And your back curls. And here we are. We find ourselves in sort of a curly kick shape, a C shape in the spine. Going up tall from the base of the spine as you inhale. Bottom of the back comes forwards, chest lift, head lift, and then exhale, curling all the way back down again. And then we'll just find the tall sitting so position there. Keep letting the shoulders come away from the ears. How are you feeling there, Claire? Yes. We'll bring a little bit of movement just into the arms, and then we'll do a couple of standing postures. So palms are facing forwards here, and I'll just talk you through all the options before we move. So you might want to be taking an inhale in, and then you're just reaching down to one side and letting your hands just come to your waist. And then coming tall to sit up. That might feel fine. You might want to try taking an inhale as your elbow comes up to the ceiling, so hand on your shoulder here. And then coming up again, or if that feels okay, you might want to try reaching your hand up towards the ceiling. But watch your backs and shoulders for this one. Coming back up again. We'll do one more, just with whichever one felt right for you there. So taking an inhale, coming up. Exhale, leaning over. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, letting the arm come down if it was up. And we'll do the same on the other side. So again, might be hand to hip first of all. So you're inhaling to lift the chest. Exhale, reaching down. Inhaling to come up. Exhaling, falls here. This time hand can come to the shoulder. Inhale as the shoulder comes up. Exhale as you reach down. Inhaling, coming up to centre. Exhale as the arm comes down. And the last option is inhaling the arm comes all the way up. Exhale as you're reaching over here. 
Keeping your breath going. Inhaling up to centre. Exhale, letting the arm come down again. Good. And then you can just take any little shoulder movements that you feel you would like to there. I'm going to move up into a standing position. So I'm just going to move my chair back a little bit. Um, just be careful when you're moving your chairs. Just be aware they might be heavy, they might be a bit awkward. So try not to just swing them and fling them around. But we're going to do a balance exercise here standing with the chair to our side. So think about your feet being straight ahead, first of all. And for anything that we do in standing, you're welcome to take support, whether you've got two legs on the ground or one leg. You can have support or you can be close to the wall and have something to hold on to there. So before we move into a single leg balance, just feel how it feels to stand as tall as you can. What does your tall, upright posture feel like? And everybody's will be a bit different. But one way of thinking about good posture is where can you feel that you can breathe well? Where do you feel you can get that expanse moving, your ribs moving, your abdomen moving when you breathe? And we'll go into good breathing much more in the weekly classes. And once you've found as even a position as you can be in with weight as steady through both feet as you like, then we're going to think about taking the weight down onto the standing leg. So the, the rule of thumb is that if you're holding onto something, you're picking up the leg closest to what you're holding on to. So for me just now, this is my right leg that's going to lift up. I'm going to use the chair for support. So I'm going to push all the weight down into my left leg, really lifting up at the hip of my left leg, squeezing the bottom muscle of my left leg on, I'm looking past the screen and finding something still to look at. And then I'm just gently picking up my foot. So it might be it coming to your tiptoe, is where you want to stop today and you're just feeling that balance of one flat foot on the ground and one tiptoe on the ground. You might feel steady enough to pick up one foot and again just maintaining as tall a posture as you can with the foot lifted or maybe you feel you can let go and you want to bring your hands together. Taking a breath out as we just come back down to stand. So again, lots of different ways that you can make these postures and exercises yours. Everybody can be doing something different. So if we were to do that on the other side, you would either be turning yourself around or turning your chair around or heading over to something else that's sturdy. So I'll come over to the wall for this side. And now I'm taking the weight down through my right leg pushing the floor away with my right foot and coming up onto my left toes. Finding that steady focus point out past the screen. You don't want to be looking at a screen of wobbly people. And then maybe just seeing how does it feel to pick up the foot from the ground. Maybe this leg's not so good and you really need to hold on on this side. Or maybe this is your stronger side and you feel that you might want to reduce your handholds here. Again, it's up to you. Then together, just take a breath out as you let that foot come back down again. Good. Well done. Okay. And I think noticing quite a lot of people will have one sturdier leg than the other. So, yeah. <laughs> Clarice, you're with the thumbs up there. So, making sure that you're doing something that's appropriate for that side of the body rather than thinking, I managed it on this side, therefore I ought to be able to do it on the other side. There's no ought to in yoga. Mm -hmm. We're going to use either the wall or the front of the chair for the other standing exercise that I'm going to talk you through today. So gently turning your chair around so your seat part of the chair is facing you, or you can come to the wall for this, and I'll show you both. So we're going to find a slightly wider stance here. So your feet are maybe matched width apart. And then we're going to slowly come forward to place our hands on the chair. If the chair is feeling far too far away from you, then this is when I talked about using your recipe books or something to stack up the chair, or I'll show you on the wall as well. 
So we're going to take a breath in, finding tall standing again. And then as you exhale, you're just bringing your hands down onto the chair here. And here we're taking some weight through our arms, being really active through the arms. So it's like you're pushing the chair away and you're working on your back being as flat as possible. So here we've got our tummy buttons lifting up towards the spine to give our back some stability. Pushing into the seat of the chair with your palms, fingers as spread out as we can. Then we're going to just work on opening up the chest a little bit. So I'm going to keep my right hand where it is, maybe slide it a bit more, slide more into the centre of the chair. And then I'm going to lift my left hand up with my hand onto my shoulder. There's a step ahead of me there. <laughs> and then I'm just going to bring it back down again. And as players just demonstrated, the other option for this one, as long as your spine feels fine, is that you take a breath in and you're opening your arm out towards the ceiling or maybe towards the corner of the room or somewhere in between. Exhale as the hand comes down. So we'll go with the same hand again, whichever option feels good for you. Inhale and you're opening your arm, either keeping the fingertips on the shoulder or opening the hand behind you. Exhale, bring the hand back down again, placing that one in the middle and moving to the other side. Remembering again, this side might feel very different. Inhale, you're drawing your hand to your shoulder or opening your hand back. Exhale, bringing the hand back down towards the chair. Inhale, lifting the arm, opening it up or keeping your hand on your shoulder. And exhale, bring it back down again. And then to come out of this position, you might want to come up onto your fingertips, maybe bend your knees, maybe put your hands heavy on your thighs just to walk up or step closer into the chair, whatever way is comfortable for you to come up. And I'll just show you the same thing on the wall. So again, this is so much takes a lot of pressure out of your back here, so you can still get the same chest opening without having that forward flexion in your spine. So yeah, Claire, if you're good to demonstrate the seated one there, I'll do the long one here. So you're walking the one hand slightly towards the center of your body, taking an inhale, letting the hand come to the shoulder or opening all the way back behind you. Exhale, bring the hand back round again. Good. And then we'll go to the other side one time as well. So inhale, you're pushing the wall or the chair away as you open out the chest, bring the elbow behind you or the outstretched arm behind you. And then exhaling as you bring your hand back down again. Good. And then you can bring yourself back up off the chair. And I think it's important to say that your breath will fit your own movement. So if you end up completely out of time with me, then that's good because we're not all breathing at the same speed. We won't all breathe at the same speed. So you'll find that you just move in between, slightly out of sync for everybody else on the screen. That's a little fun as well. Okay, we're going to come down onto the floor and I'll just show you a couple of different things that we sometimes do on the floor. So you can get yourself comfortable. And um, this is where we usually end when we're doing a full class. So you may well want to think about when we do go to the floor that you would have a blanket or your pillow and things close by you there. Okay. So we're going to do our figure of four, which is a movement that opens up the outside of the hip joint. So if you have your strap to hand or your scarf, as players got there, then we'll show you how you can do that. So what we're thinking of is the right leg is going to be this leg that's your supporting leg, and the left leg is going to be the one that's doing the movement to start with. And you can have your feet however bent up you like. The slightly straighter your legs are, the easier it is on your hip, or the more bent up your legs are, the slightly more opening you're going to get on your hip. So we'll start off with the right leg quite straight, and you're going to be taking your Foot on the left side, just above the knee on the right. And that there might feel like plenty of opening for your hip there. 
If you're not really feeling anything around the outside of your hip, you can just start to wriggle your right foot closer up towards your bottom, so the knees bending a bit more. And you might want to stop there. Maybe now you're thinking, yeah, okay, you feel the left hip opening. Options with this strap at this point are to come underneath the right leg if you want to try just giving a little bit more support and bringing the foot off the ground, then you can have your right leg in the strap. So your supporting leg is being lifted up very slightly. Or you might want to have the strap around the left leg just to give it a bit of a cradle so you feel that as it's opening, it's got something to support it. So you can have the strap in either way there. And that's just, again, showing you all these different options that we would do for, for one posture or one position that we're in. And usually by the time we're down onto the floor, we're moving a little bit more slowly. We're giving support to the back and we're giving support to the joints as we're moving. And then to come out of this posture, if you're holding onto the strap, you might want to just let your leg lengthen a little bit. You can start to slide the right foot along the floor. And then whenever you get to a point where you can lift the left leg off, you can just let it come down. And then both feet just return back to the mat or the bed next to each other. I'm going to show you a different exercise. So we would always do the left and the right, but we're going to do a different thing on the right side this time. So we're going to come into what's known as a supine twist. And you may want to use pillows or a bolster here as you come into this posture. So if you're going to use pillows or a bolster, they'll be on the right hand side of your body. And what we're going to do is just start off with the hands down at the side. Move the hips ever so slightly over to the left side. And then we're going to take our knees over to the right. Now, the things to think about here is if you know that your spine has problems, then straighten out your legs a little bit. And when you take your knees over to the right, you're taking the rotation much further down into your low back and pelvis. I your spine. If you know that your spine is stable and you can bend up your knees a little more, and take them over to the right. And again, this is where I'm saying if you have something underneath your right leg when you take your knees over, then that means that the leg's supported and you can still have the twist, but without that feeling of your legs hanging in space and getting pulled by gravity. So really up to you what position you want to take there. The legs can be quite straight, there can be a bolster there, and you've just taken them slightly off centre, or you might be like Claire is with your knees a bit further bent up and taking yourself further over to that side. There's the option, if you like, to take the left hand away from your body so it's reaching out in the opposite direction to your knees. And you might want to turn your head and look along your left hand, or you might want to keep your head just straight up towards the ceiling. Digestion can often be helped with twists. So if you find that your digestion is sluggish at all, often a twist can help that. And it's also a really nice position to feel the change in your breath. So often you can feel the upper side of your chest. So for me, my left side of my chest and side body really moving up. Now that I've moved my arm and leg out of the way. And then to come out of this posture, if your head's turned, you can bring it back up to centre. If your arm's away from your body, just bring it back down again. And then you might want to slide your knees straight along the ground and gently roll onto your back. Or maybe you want to just keep your knees bent and bring your knees back up to centre from there. Good. So we're going to do just one arm movement before we finish up for today. So what I would like to think about for the arms is a position that I know a lot of people find really tight across their shoulders, either post-surgery, post-radiotherapy, um, if there's scarring there and things, often having your hands in this position can feel quite difficult. But by working on it and opening up this kind of side chest and armpit area, then it can really help with posture, with back pain, with breath. 
So we're going to start off with the hands down at the sides and your palms are facing upwards towards the ceiling. And then on the breath in, we're just going to slide the hands away from the body. As if you were making a snow angel on the ground. Doesn't matter where they get to or if one's different from the other. And you're exhaling and sliding the hands down the floor or the bed, back down towards the side of the body. And you can just move there in your own time, inhaling as arms come up, exhaling as arms come down. And if you're in a position where you're finding that actually you can't have your arm in contact with the ground, because it's too tight across your shoulder, then again, you can pop something underneath this if it will slide and the whole thing can slide together. Maybe a block under your arm and bring it back down or shorten your arm again. So we often do that, pop your hand onto your shoulder and then you'll find that it's easier to move without the whole weight of your limb there. So you're just moving your elbow up and down rather than your outstretched hand. But again, before you come to class, I'll know a wee bit more about you all. So I'll be able to adapt things as we go for each person in the class. So you can make this your last one. Both arms are moving up. On the inhale, down on the exhale, and then just letting both hands return to the sides. And then at this point, we usually say, get yourself set up for relaxation. But we're not going to do a relaxation in this session. Um, I'm sorry to say, Claire, I'm no. really disappointed that you're missing out on that bit of it. Got it already. Um, <laughs> you're blind already, bless you. Oh, well, we can do a separate recording with a relaxation in <laughs> Right, so that brings us to the end of yeah. class. Normally, we would do a relaxation at this point. Um, but we're not planning to do that as part of this taster session. So anything that you want to say just now? Um, yeah, just I know that's just a snippet of what the, the hours class usually is. Um, I've never found an exercise that I can't do. Um, what I have done a lot is adapted, as Yvonne says. She's given me an alternative move, which has helped. Um, I do have issues with my lower back, so I'm often just a little bit more wary of certain things in that area, but I've never had an exercise yet that I can't do with an ad adaptation, which is really good. And I've always felt so much better after the class. Um, and just ending on the relaxation feels great too. So yeah, just, I recommend the class. Um, if anyone hasn't done it before, please come and check out the classes and yeah, give yourself some, some nice uh, yoga that you feel safe doing in the safe hands with Yvonne and Bertram Yoga. Uh, yeah, highly recommend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think certainly some of the feedback has definitely been that, that's the, how do you exercise safely? What are things that you can do? And it feels too much to think about going to a gym or starting off with a personal trainer when you're not sure of your own body. And I think a lot of people have said, being able to do this is a really helpful start into other things that you can do as well and we know that movement and activity with secondary breast cancer is really important yeah. for your physical and your mental and emotional well-being so if this can be a way that can help you yeah get back I hope into so. that thing I know <laughs> I've yeah I know I've spoken to some um community members at the various makes it count retreats and I know there's a level of fear almost about getting back into exercise after their diagnosis and not being sure of um, what to do safely. Um, and if I can just say to people that come to the class and experience in one experience Yvonne's teaching of the class, and I'm sure you'll realise, like I did, um, that actually it can be safe and enjoyable and you can find your way back to some form of exercise after your diagnosis, which I know for the ladies that take part in the classes at the moment, I know they get a real benefit from it once a week. Um, and we're just trying to find other people who want to be introduced to these classes. Um, and yeah, so please do, please come and check us out. <laughs> Lovely, Claire, thank you very, very much for being my smiley, willing You're participant very welcome. today. <laughs> My pleasure. Your gorgeous kitty for joining in in background there. It wouldn't it wouldn't be a real? class wouldn't be a class of one without my two cats. So I felt I had to replicate that. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. So the details will all be on the website as well. You're very welcome to get in touch with either myself or Claire if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Yvonne, for taking the time to do this wee demonstration class with me. Um, I appreciate it and we'll let everybody know when everything's up on the website. Um, but yeah, so thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. No problem, bye just now.